Okay. <clears throat> All right. So I had a lot of things <laughs> that I wanted to say. Um, uh, the first uh, 15 minutes of of, of our uh, of our member meeting, but I guess first, thank you. I can't see anybody um, that's on the screens, but um, I wanted to thank everyone for for joining on this beautiful fall day. Um, I did a lot of activities earlier today and and got home early to make sure that I got everything uh, working for this meeting. But I know everyone's time is is really precious, and I really appreciate everybody buddy uh joining us for for the members meeting um so kentucky native plant society i guess we're all coming together today because we all share a love of native plants and um the native plants across kentucky so um we all share that in common so the kentucky native plant society is a nonprofit organization statewide organization that was formed in 1986 so we've been around for many decades and um we are uh, leaders of um, promoting uh, native plant education and conservation throughout the state. Um, we've got a, a really strong membership and um, we're continuing to grow every year. I know um, Jeff Nelson, our board member is gonna be touching on membership uh, in just a little bit. Um, but the members of the society, um, we are a diverse group of folks that um, <clears throat> are made up of academics, professionals, citizen scientists, and many native plant gardeners. Um, and we all share a love of plants. Um, so Jeff, you could go to that next slide. I think it has um, like, who are we? Um, you know, who, who are the, the folks that are um, board members and officers within the Native Plant Society? Um, so first, <clears throat> Our membership, um, I, as I said, we're a diverse group, um, you know, all the way to, from professionals that do this for a living, all the way to, to um, folks that, that um, just have an interest in, in just native plant gardening in their backyard. So, um, but, but one thing that we do have uh, in common is we all share a love of native plants and, and, and coming together to, to work together on, 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 you know, sharing this love through education and and also being more active through conservation act, action of of trying to protect native plants. So it doesn't matter how how big or small um, your contribution is um, to native plants in Kentucky. It's all extremely important um, from purchasing large acres of, of land um, and restoring it to to planting really awesome pollinator plants in your backyard. So it, it's all super important. Um, and we're excited uh, to all come together um, um, and, and, and talk about the kinds of things that we do at Native Plant Society. So <clears throat> I think that the screen that is being shared uh, shows um, our, our officers. Um, and since you guys don't know who's actually talking, since you can't see my face, I'm Tara Littlefield. Um, I've been the president for the past couple of years, but I've, um, I've been uh, involved with Native Plant Society for almost 20 years, and I started out leading hikes um, when I was in graduate school um, at, at the um, Natural Bridge State Park at our Wildflower Weekend. And I've served a couple different roles over the years, and um, particularly over the past five years, um, I've been involved with Native Plant Society as we've gone through a lot of changes. Um, Moving into the virtual world, a lot of technological changes with our online blog and our newsletter, um, the way that we interact now, we do everything through Zoom. Um, you know, a lot of our meetings, since we have folks that live all across the state, you know, there is a lot of benefits to doing these, these virtual presentations. Um, one negative is that sometimes things go wrong and you can't connect to the internet like me. Um, but normally, actually, this doesn't happen. This is one of the first times. Um, <clears throat> our other folks that are our officers are Heidi Braunreiter. Um, she's probably been uh, uh, <laughs> filling in for me for the past 15 minutes as I'm texting her saying, I can't get online. Um, so Heidi is a, a botanist at the uh, Office of Kentucky Nature Preserves. Um, I also work at the Office of Kentucky Nature Preserves um, as a botanist and, and managing a lot of our, our plant projects. Our... Um, our, our 
recent secretary, uh, Emily Ellingson, um, <clears throat> Uh, has served for the past couple of years as our secretary, and she was the native plant curator and um, at the UK Arboretum, and she's recently moved on, and I'll talk about that in just a second. Um, and we have a new a treasurer that just uh, joined on um, earlier in the year, Steele McFadden, and he's a wildlife biologist uh, and botanist that works for the Army Corps of Engineers um, out of Louisville, um, and he's also got a lot of a lot of really great background in um, botany across the state. Um, our board members, um, we have really awesome uh, board members and committee members that have been a part of Native Plant Society for several years. Jeff Nelson, um, I feel like I couldn't really do much without Jeff. He kind of helps us keep <laughs> everything going. Uh, Jeff is a longstanding um, uh, Native Plant Society member. Um, he lives in Western Kentucky and, and works um, as a community scientist doing uh, uh, volunteer work at nature preserves and, and helping with inventory projects and does a lot of uh, restoration work on his own property with his wife, Liz. Um, we've got uh, Dr. Jen Coslow, who's a plant ecologist at Eastern Kentucky University. Um, Wes Cunningham, um, who's a contract uh, consultant botanist uh, with Stantec out of Louisville. Uh, David Taylor, botanist at the, uh, the Daniel Boone National Forest, uh, Deb White, um, who is a former botanist at Nature Preserves and is now a contract botanist and, and um, uh, um, works with a lot of different nonprofit organizations. Um, and I, I'm trying to run through my head. I'm not looking at any of my notes. I think that might be all of our board members. So if you move on to the next slide, um, I wanted to talk about some changes. I mentioned that our secretary uh, just accepted a job up in Massachusetts um, with an arboretum up there. Um, she's uh, going to be the curator and the assistant director up there. So we're really sad to see Emily go. She's um, done a lot of great work um, with Native Plant Society and with the UK Arboretum in, in Lexington. Um, so um, we had uh, appointed a new um, secretary and we're really excited uh, to have Kelly Watson, Dr. Kelly Watson join our team. She is a biogeographer and GIS specialist and also a botanist at the Eastern Kentucky University. And she's also a heavy competitor in our uh, Kentucky Botanist Big Year, our iNaturalist um, uh, competition, friendly competition that we have amongst the super nerdy plant folks uh, to see how many uh, plants that we can see in a year. Um, and then I also have on this slide um, kind of a shout out to Nick Keenick. Uh, he uh, was a committee member and, and helped us out on several different projects um, with Native Plant Society over the past couple of years. He was also an associate editor of the Lady Slipper. And he has also recently moved on to Cambridge, uh, England, um, and he's currently getting his master's. So we are sad to see Nick and Emily move on. Um, but, uh, you know, uh, our loss is, is their game. So they'll, they'll, uh, do some great things and, and hopefully our, our paths will cross and, and Kentucky will suck them back in again at some point in, in the coming years um, and we can get them back doing plant work. But um, so really appreciate uh, everybody on the board and, and our new uh, uh, secretary. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's, so that's who, who the Native Plant Society is. Um, last year during the pandemic was kind of, a crazy year for a lot of folks. Um, we didn't have any field trips. It was kind of a shocking situation. So, we were able to have a couple of hikes. Um, so we're really, really excited to get our, our hike um, and field trip program going. Um, so we were able to successfully have three hikes. Um, they were all kind of in the later summer um, and fall time periods. And our first one that we had was in Western Kentucky. It was kind of a driving tour to uh, six or seven different spots. Um, and Gerald Burnett, who is a biologist and a land manager out um, in the um, 
WMAs in far western Kentucky. You were in Kentucky for a lot. A, a really great biologist and, um, and and botanist and amazing photographer. And he, um, along with Jeff and um, Robert Dunlap, um, I call them our, our Coastal Point Collective. Uh, those three folks out there in far western Kentucky, um, you know, have been looking at really cool sites. And so they came up with the idea to to have this driving tour as our, as our first field trip um, for the year. And that was really successful. Um, it was a, a full uh, hike. I think we had, you know, close to 20 folks that joined that. Um, and you can go on our website. There's an article about it that has some some of the plants that they saw. So that was that was really awesome. And then um, here in Central Kentucky, uh, just over the past month and a half, um, Alan Abbott, <clears throat> who is a um, local botanist, and he's also really active on Instagram. He's got a, a plant account there that a lot of us follow. Um, he held two hikes at Pine Creek Barrens. And um, Alan's a really interesting guy. He does a lot of botanizing in Southern Kentucky and also in Southern Indiana. And um, he has a particular interest in in grasslands. Um, he visits a lot of different barren systems in those areas. And, and he's got a really unique way of, of kind of sharing what, how, how he has learned plants over the years and, 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 you know, and how he teaches other folks about these things too. So, um, Instagram, he's a, his handle, I don't know how to pick those things. Um, his, uh, uh, he's Kentucky Woods on on Instagram, so you can follow him there. Um, and there were um, we've had um, articles about um, the two uh, uh, field trips that he led too. So lots of cool plants um, that that they saw some some gentians and uh, lace, some rare lace stresses that they saw in the Barron's community in general. So so that was really great. And I know that later on in this meeting, Jeff is going to be talking about. Um, our field trip committee and how we can uh, work together to organize even more field trips for 2022. The Lady Slipper uh, for members is has been the the newsletter of the Kentucky Native Plant Society since uh, 1986 was when uh, first the society was formed and the first uh, Lady Slipper came out typewritten format on uh, multiple copies. Um, and uh, I, while I'm mentioning that, uh, the entire archive of all of the Lady Slippers published since 1986 are, uh, 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 so uh, in 2020, uh, the decision was made to switch to a blog format on, uh, uh, on the website. Uh, and so that way we can, we publish the articles, they're uh, uh, on the website, always available. And then each month we send out a monthly email digest uh, uh, for the, uh, goes to members and friends. Uh, and that email digest has a link to each of the articles that was published in the uh, 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 previous month. So this year, uh, since January through the la latest issue in 2021, uh, we published over 58, 58 articles uh, in the Lady Slipper. So uh, be sure to, uh, you're all on the email list. Uh, so yeah. Uh, and Susan, uh, along with her uh, uh, associate editor, who is managing editor and a, a the associate editor, uh, uh, Jonathan Kubish and Kendall McDonald. Uh, they do a magnificent job getting the articles in shape and uh, looking good. And they are always looking for people who would like to uh, uh, write articles. So uh, they can be anything. We've had a poem in the last issue. We have very technical articles. We have uh, general articles about uh, gardens. So uh, if you if you like to write about native plants, uh, the easiest way is to contact uh, uh, the editors 
by and I'll uh, just type it into the uh, everyone in the meeting type it in here just send a uh, uh, lady slipper at knps.org so uh, email to that location if you're interested in in uh, uh, writing for the lady slipper so and with that we'll go to student grants okay um so every year we try to give out student research grants to um, students that are studying botanical efforts here in Kentucky. Um, this year we've had very few applicants, so we really want to push this out there that we have uh, funding available for any students who have interest in studying any botanical related projects. Um, they could be field based and um, Typically, we have projects that contribute to the knowledge of Kentucky's flora or natural communities. Um, and they are available on our website where you can look more into it as well as um, uh, apply for it there. So if you have any interest in that, reach out to us. We would be happy to uh, look at your proposal. Or if you know a student, <laughs> who might be interested. Um, I, are we still doing the uh, rare na and native plant restoration grants and the native plant in inventory grants? I didn't see that on the slide, but it's still posted on the webpage and those would be open to people who are not students. So it's so a broader group. Um, hey, Jen, I can uh, speak to that. Yeah, we still are um, offering um, uh, restoration grants that um, the, the grant funding that we had gotten for, for that pot was for a, a kind of more globally rare plant. So that's why it says to work with Na uh, Office of Kentucky Nature Preserves for those grants. Um, but I know that <clears throat> the board um, is currently uh, discussing whether to open up those research grants uh, for just kind of general native plant restoration. Right now it's targeted more for globally rare plants. So more on, on, <clears throat> on that grant program in the, in the future. Hello, so I'm Steele McFadden. I'm the, the treasurer for KMPS. Um, can everybody hear me? You're good. We okay. can hear you. So um, pretty simple. Uh, on the left, you can see our total cash balance. Uh, we've been increasing our funds over the, the past decade. Uh, you can see from 2011 to 2021. Um, on the right, you can see what our expenses were for, for those years as well. And the last two years, uh, we haven't been able to spend as much money in a lot of that is due to, to COVID, obviously. Uh, so hopefully next year, things will be a little bit back more to normal and we'll be able to spend more money, take more hikes, have more speakers, that, that sort of stuff. Um, currently our total assets are, are about 41K um, and <clears throat> today we're, we're in the green about $4,000. And that's all I've got. Okay, thank you, Steele. Appreciate that. Uh, okay, uh, besides being webmaster, I'm also uh, membership chair currently. Uh, and uh, uh, just a few stats I think would be of most interest. Currently, we have 550 current active members, dues paying, they're all paid up. Uh, and that includes 167 life members. And uh, that's always an option if you don't don't like having to write a check every month, every year for membership, you can become a life member of uh, the society. Uh, in 2021 this year we've so far we have 136 new members and 83 renewals and those are both the most uh, that we have uh, 
had since I became membership chair uh, several years ago. Uh, part of it is our week long virtual uh, wildflower week last year. We got, I mean, in April, we got a lot of people uh, who were popping in. They, they saw articles about it, the events in the Lady Slipper. Uh, they popped in and uh, joined and renewed. So uh, uh, it was, it's, it's looking to be a good year. And uh, uh, we depend on members to not only fund the uh, things we're doing, but as we'll talk a little bit more later on is most virtually everything the society does is done by volunteers. And uh, uh, as we discuss committees later on today, we're gonna talk about how we can try to get, get uh, see more members who wanna get involved in, in activities of the society will be able to uh, get, get so involved. So, uh, and just the end of the picture of, uh, uh, again, <laughs> I didn't realize it, but uh, uh, Pine Creek Barrens. This was at, at our full membership meeting in October of 2018. Uh, it was at uh, uh, Bernheim where we had the membership meeting. And then we went on a field trip out to uh, the Barrens. Uh, and that was uh, Tara talking to the group about uh, the Barron's ecosystem. Uh, hopefully by next year, October, we'll be able to have uh, in-person fall membership meeting again and all get together and not only see each other, but uh, get out and see some plants as well. So uh, keep our fingers crossed and uh, that's it about membership. If you got any questions, uh, put them into the chat window and uh, we'll answer them in a bit. Tara, All right. Uh, are you ready to talk about the botanical symposia? I am. So I, I am able. I don't know if you guys can see me. Um, I am um, connected to the internet through my phone, and I'm in like an old cemetery, so it's kind of spooky. Um, anyways, uh, internet's still not working at my house, so I had to run up the hill. Um, okay, so uh, the Botanical Symposium. So we've been organizing uh, a Botanical Symposium since about 2014, I think is when we started doing that. And, uh, and you know, our fall meetings and, and is, is more for members. Our, our spring wildflower week is more for general public. Um, and so we decided to, to start organizing these botanical symposiums for Kentucky to kind of bring together all the different professionals and academics and, and um, community scientists that are, that are working on um, different uh, plant projects across the state, whether it be management, monitoring, research. So um, a little bit more formal type projects that folks are working on across the state. Because um, I mean, this is probably a, a theme for a lot of different disciplines, but um, you know, there were many years where folks just didn't work together or didn't know who was working on what. So, so this was this was a way for everyone to just the, the botanical community to come together and figure out well who's working on what projects all across the state. So, it's been really successful in, in helping build our botanical community um, a lot like a lot of our other projects. But um, so. Last year during the pandemic, um, it was quite a learning curve for us for, for um, organizing things on Zoom and virtual. So we decided to just continue on and, <clears throat> and organize it virtually. And, and actually it was very successful. Um, we had uh, Alan Weekly, Dr. Alan Weekly, who is a professor at um, University of North Carolina in Chapel Hill. Um, he, he was our keynote speaker. He's a phenomenal speaker and has um, written The Flora of the Southeast. And you can actually download a free copy of this PDF of, and you can filter it for just Kentucky as well. Um, so phenomenal uh, researcher and taxonomist and botanist and, and kind of helped um, set the stage for 
uh, the diversity of the Southeast, how Kentucky fits into that diversity. Um, so that was great. Um, in addition to that, we had a lot of folks from the Office of Kentucky Nature Preserves uh, give updates on a lot of um, our projects across the state um, and uh, projects that involved our uh, roadside uh, um, pollinator habitat inventory project that we work on with transportation. Um, you know, we manage a lot of the state nature preserves across the state. So we had a monitoring and management of rare plants and communities on our nature preserves, um, the Plant Conservation Alliance and some of the conservation horticultural projects uh, that we work on across the state. Um, those are uh, projects where we have a particular rare plant and we work with um, uh, uh, horticulturists that can actually grow those and then we, we plant them back. So, so, so that was, um, uh, that was the, uh, and, and we were able to record all of these presentations and, and have them online. So, you know, while we like meeting uh, in person, um, I think that we're going to probably moving forward um, with the botanical symposium still have a lot of that online because it, it does bring in folks outside of Kentucky. We, we have a broader reach when we have these things online and we can record them so that you know, folks can go back and, 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 and look at these uh, presentations. So um, moving forward, we are uh, continuing uh, with organizing that. It's gonna be on December 9th this year uh, from 10 to 2.30. We've got a lot of great um, speakers that are, that are gonna be um, talking about different projects. Um, to highlight a few of the folks. Um, uh, Chris Benda, the uh, AKA the Illinois botanizer is gonna be speaking um, and he works in Southern Illinois on uh, rare plant monitoring. Um, and so he's gonna talk to us about some of the work that he's been working on in Southern Illinois in regards to updating uh, statuses of some of their rare plants. And they utilize a lot of volunteers. So I'm really excited about his, uh, his project and how they, how they organize their um, rare plant uh, monitoring efforts over there. Uh, Brittany Veers um, works for uh, uh, Southeastern Grasslands Initiative, and she's also works for Quail Unlimited, and, and she works on a lot of grassland uh, remnant restoration projects on private lands in Kentucky and Tennessee. Um, so she's going to give an update on some of her projects that she works on. Um, Joey Shaw, professor um, at University of Tennessee, um, is going to talk about the Kentucky Tennessee Plant Atlas. Um, Division of Water, uh, Nature Preserve folks. So um, please join that. Um, within the next week or so, we're gonna be releasing the agenda. Um, so you can check that out online. And if you are don't, do, don't have, um, if you haven't signed up for our Lady Slipper, Lady Slipper newsletter, please do that because um, in, in the next uh, uh, issue that goes out in a couple of weeks, um, there'll be information on the Botanical Symposium there as well. So you can move on to the next slide, Jeff. Oh, I just wanted to mention, um, you know, we do also organize other things like plant identification workshops and those are really fun. Um, those are probably some of my more, <laughs> my favorite activities at, at, at uh, Kentucky Native Plant Society. The last one we did was in 2019. Um, we organized a sedge workshop. workshop. Um, with Dr. Rob Noxie from the New York Botanical Garden. Um, and that was a fantastic class. Um, we are in discussions with a few different professors for next year, um, trying to get um, some plant identification workshops for next year as well, in addition to field trips and, and some of our other um, meetings that we're, that we're organizing. So some of the ones that we're trying to organize are um, a graminoid uh, class, um, different types of grasses, um, and then also a golden rod and aster workshop. Um, and if you're interested, Nature Preserve folks, myself, uh, uh, Devin Rogers and, and Vanessa Volker are going to be teaching a sedge workshop at Floracliff uh, in May of next year. So you can uh, go to the Floracliff uh, website and sign up um, for that within the next month or so. I think it's going to be advertised. Um, so next slide. Oh, and just real quick touch on the plant atlas. This is something that Native Plant Society um, has worked on over the past couple of years with several different universities and also the Tennessee Native Plant Society. And plant atlases are just a way that different researchers and, and, and interest plant people that are interested in plants can 
can figure out where um, these different native plants are distributed across the state and across the whole their whole range um, and the global range. Um, so we partnered with Tennessee to um, do a Kentucky Tennessee plant atlas. Um, and so I think that in the materials that Jeff um, sent out or, or will send out, there'll, there'll be a link to this Kentucky Tennessee plant atlas. Um, there's all, several other plant atlases. Unfortunately, right now, um, our plant atlases within the state are kind of, there's several different efforts, separate efforts going on. And so one of the um, one of the goals uh, that we at, in Native Plant Society have is kind of bringing all of these different databases together um, so that we don't have to check five different databases to see um, where a particular plant occurs. Um, you know, at Nature Preserves, we specialize in rare plants. So we've got probably the, the best um, distribution maps and locations for all the rare species within the state. Um, but there's other plant atlases out there, USDA plant atlases. Um, BONAP, uh, that's uh, an acronym for the biota of North America plants. Um, um, and then uh, Julian Campbell has a plant atlas and then our uh, Kentucky Tennessee plant atlas. That also links to specimens, uh, the herbarium specimens. So, uh, and then we've got iNaturalist. That's a whole other separate database that helps us figure out um, where plants are distributed across the state. So lots of really great efforts that are going on, but we just need to talk more amongst all these different entities um, and figure out a way to bridge it all together. Um, so that will be a committee um, goal, probably in the Plant Conservation Committee or, or one of our other committees. So if you're interested in helping with those efforts, um, please sign on to one of those committees. Um, the next slide, Jeff. All right, it's Heidi and her green slide. I like it. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Um, just going to spotlight myself real quick. Um, so I'm the vice president of Native Plant Society, and I was in charge of organizing Wildflower Week last year. Um, it was it was different. We did a virtual Wildflower Week, um, but it was very successful. We did virtual field trips, and we had over 17 different videos submitted for that. Um, and then um, I was just looking at all the different views on the on the YouTube the other day. We had over 1,500 views of all of those videos. So it, um, a lot of people were very interested in them. Um, we also had a week-long iNaturalist botany blitz where um, all of our members joined the iNaturalist group um, and over 100 different members joined this and we got over 3,200 observations and 450 species observed in over 60 counties. And that was all in one week. Um, so it was really great. And we're gonna redo it in 2022. Um, you can see some of, oh, okay. And <laughs> um, so you can mark your calendars for April 8th through the 10th. That is gonna be our next um, wildflower week. And we're going to do it in person at Natural Bridge State Resort Park. Um, we're going to go back to the tr traditional wildflower weekend that we have had in the past before COVID. So we'll have a Friday night social and we'll have hikes on Friday afternoon, Saturday and Sunday. And then we will have presentations on Saturday evening. And then trying to kind of incorporate the success that we had um, this year with our virtual wildflower weekend, we are going to do um, a week long I naturalist botany blitz following or proceeding to that weekend. So then the last day of the botany blitz will also be the last day of the wildflower weekend. So very excited and looking forward to that. And we are reaching out to um, people and seeing who will be our presenters. And as soon as we do, we will let everyone know. So looking forward to seeing you all in person again. As, as most of you, I'm sure, realize uh, there's a lot of things that uh, uh, Kentucky Native Plant Society uh, wants to do and does each year. And uh, the more we can get our members engaged with the 
society. And the way we, the more we can get done to pursue the mission of the Kentucky Native Plant Society, uh, which is to preserve, protect, and defend uh, uh, native plants in, in Kentucky and our region. And a, and a vibrant active committee structure can really help that uh, move forward. Um, committees are so important. They, the, when the society was originally formed in 1986, uh, standing committees was one of the 10 articles of the bylaws. And you can always find the bylaws on our uh, Native Plant Society webpage. Uh, and so they rec the group recognized right at the start that in a volunteer organization, if you can organize your volunteers around different topics and that, uh, a lot more can get done. So uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about why we're talking about uh, committees right now, but let me just quickly go through what our standing committees are uh, in, in uh, uh, I won't read these, uh, even yourself, um, but uh, the field trips committee uh, organizes our field trips. They find people to lead field trips. They find new areas to go for field trips. And uh, the more uh, members we have on that uh, committee, uh, the more active it can be. Uh, the programs committee, uh, which is the one committee, one committee in the in the uh, uh, bylaws that. Uh, the chairperson of that is the vice president of the society. So the Heidi is our uh, chair of the programs committee and they do a lot. They plan and schedule events for the committee. And we talked about several of them, the spring and fall membership meetings, wildflower weekend, uh, the symposium and workshops. Um, so, uh, and there is always a bit of work available for members of that committee. Uh, the newsletter committee, uh, they are responsible for the publication of the Lady Slipper newsletter. Uh, and uh, we have a, they behind the, behind the scenes, uh, they develop things such as uh, uh, authors guidelines and submission guidelines for the newsletter and so forth. Uh, I noticed, uh, Susan, uh, you joined, um, came to the meeting just a little bit late. So uh, do you want to say anything about uh, the newsletter? Can you hear me? Yes. Probably not because I have laryngitis. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and, and okay, we, well. We talked together so much that I know you covered everything that was important. I trust you completely. Okay. Thank you, Susan. So, okay. Everyone that was uh, laryngitis, uh, <laughs> Susan Harkins, our, our editor of the newsletter. Uh, the Plant Conservation uh, Committee is uh, one that Tara has a lot of, of personal interest in. It's an area that uh, uh, she has taken the lead in. And so uh, this is a committee that uh, can do a lot more than it currently is. And I know Tara has some visions of what, what such a committee could do. Uh, so uh, this is a, that's a committee we're gonna, gonna have to uh, get, get much more active. Uh, membership committee that I'm chair of, talked about that, uh, mainly keeping our database organized, uh, maintain the mailing list on, on MailChimp that sends stuff out to everybody, and occasionally do uh, member drives. Certification program. Uh, the Tara, if you don't mind, say just a couple things about the certification process, what certifications have done in the past and uh, what we'd like to do going forward. Yeah, so I'm trying to remember the years. I think it was between uh, 2008 and 
2014 for like six or seven years every year we held a native plant stewardship certification program and that was a six-part course that we offered throughout the year that dealt with um all the issues that you would need uh need to know um uh to uh restore native plants on on your property or on natural areas so um there was courses on um natural communities across Kentucky, uh, a, a general native plants identification uh, course, a, an invasive species and management course, a native plant gardening and seed collection course. Um, then we would have uh, um, actual like field trips for, um, you know, invasive management and, 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 and things like that. So that was a six port course. And then at, at the end, whenever, um, you completed all the course, you got a certification. Um, I know in that it was a very successful program that we had over, I think, 115 or so folks that, that went through the entire course, got the certification. It was a combination of, of students. We had a lot of students. We had a lot of consultants, a lot of professionals, um, and then a lot of just, you know, general uh, citizen scientists uh, and um, you know, amateur type botanists that just want to learn more. <clears throat> so a really successful program. Um, it kind of stalled over the past few years, primarily because um, I taught the natural community and plant identification course, but several of the other courses that, um, that we had, um, Mary Carol Cooper uh, taught our, our native plant um, gardening course and, and she passed away several years ago and, and she also helped um, move that program along. So. So we just haven't really gotten it back organized. In 20, in the beginning of 2020, we had really high hopes of starting that program again. And then COVID hit. Um, we, we even had gone so far as to, uh, you know, um, have some, some folks interested in, in, in uh, coordinating that program for us. But uh, we just haven't gotten it back together again. Um, that's definitely something that, that we would like to do. And I think that there's a need for that um, within the state. Um, but yeah, that's so that's kind of that that in a nutshell. So if you're if anyone is interested in, in helping push push that again, um, I think that would be great. The, the one thing that we didn't do with that program and we, it went on for six or seven years, but you know we had gathered so many um, trained folks at that point, um, we really needed to unleash them on all of our different projects that that needed um, help, like. Um, yeah adopting certain areas for native plant restoration or, or rare plant monitoring. Um, we, we didn't necessarily connect the um, graduates of that class with specific projects uh, to kind of lead and move forward. So, so we, we uh, yeah, we hope to get it going again. Thanks, Tara. Uh, oh, and uh... Okay, uh, the outreach committee is basically uh, in charge of getting out, educating, spreading the mission of the society uh, to groups, to schools, to uh, uh, gardeners group, master gardeners groups, through educational programs, through talks, through educational materials and all that. Um, and uh, that's an area where there's a lot of interest, but uh, needs a lot of hands to help. So uh, uh, there's going to be a little bit more about uh, how you can get involved in these things uh, in just a minute here. So uh, the strategic planning committee is responsible for developing long term strategy uh, plans and then uh, for the society and then developing uh, action plans for that. And we had a really good initial strategic planning committee meeting back in February, at the end of February of 2020. And we uh, talked about, uh, it, it just went really well. There was about 25 people involved, um, members of the society. We talked about a lot of things, strengths and weaknesses, challenges and opportunities. and. We, we were coming out of there with a, pl a plan to now move forward. And uh, then guess what, COVID hit. And 
Interestingly enough, uh, global pandemic was not one of the challenges we had uh, considered in our strategic planning uh, process. So uh, the strategic planning process was basically on hold, but uh, now that we seem to be coming out of the pandemic, uh, hopefully we can get that going again and, and uh, move forward in, in the long term. And then finally, the last committee, website and social media. Uh, this committee maintains our, our internet presence. Uh, right now we have the website of which I'm currently the webmaster. We have a Facebook page and a Facebook group. We have an Instagram account, which uh, our departing secretary, Emily, uh, pretty much uh, ran. So we're gonna be looking for somebody to help run the Instagram account. We've now got a YouTube channel. Uh, and so we'll be looking for people to kind of come on board to help us uh, expand this committee and do some of those things. So the next steps, what we, what we hope to do over the next several months is we're going to poll you and, and all the rest of our membership explain some of the things that committees do and try to see uh, how many people or who is interested in which committee out there. Uh, I know when you join or renew, we have on our membership uh, form uh, where your interests lie and where you might like to help. But, uh, and, and we really appreciate that input and that's where we get a list of people to reach out to. But this one, we're gonna ask people to simply indicate one committee that they'd like to help out at. And hopefully this winter for every one of our committees, we can get a, a two or three or more members willing to participate. And maybe one nice good thing to come out of the pandemic is one of the big problems with committees in volunteer organizations is everybody's busy and has a life outside of the society. They're, so, and most of them are volunteering for multiple organizations, as I'm sure you all are. So uh, getting together to discuss com uh, committee business was always a challenge. And the pandemic showed us that we've got this technology we're using right now, which can really help to uh, uh, move that, com that committee work of getting together, to see each other face to face and discuss things in general. And then a lot of the work can then be taken care of in emails and so on and so forth. So our goal uh, this winter is to find, find, recruit people for each of the committees and then for each of the committees have a Zoom organizational planning committee and then hopefully they'll, the committees will take off, so. Okay, I guess uh, we're open for questions and I'll stop sharing and we can see each other, everybody. So. Okay, well, uh, unless there are, are there any questions at all? And Tara, you wanna say goodbye to everybody and, <laughs> call, and wrap it up? <laughs> Sure. Um, I really appreciate everyone giving their time today on Saturday on, on this nice, beautiful fall day. I hope you get had a chance to get out and enjoy um, your day and continue to enjoy it af afterwards. But yeah, I, I, like Jeff said, he's going to be sending out an email to, to everybody. Um, and, uh, and please get involved or, or reach out to us if you have any ideas or questions or comments um, about any of the things that we talked about or any ideas that you may have as a member um, that we can do um, as an organization to be more effective or efficient or um, accomplish our missions. But yeah, it's, it's all about um, building up new leadership within our organization and, and, and bringing together all, all our, our botanical community. So um, yeah, we, we need help. Um, so yeah, it, um, I guess, uh, thanks for joining and, and you'll be hearing from us, uh, soon through email. Um, I guess, I guess that's it. <laughs> <laughs>